Hello, my friends, and welcome back to live coverage of Mythic Championship number six. My name's Riley Knight. We are going to get it away with round six of this tournament before very much longer. I've got the pleasure of the company of Eduardo Saj Gallic. And Eduardo, we are heading down to the feature match area right here and right now to see how things go between our next two players. Casting your eyes over this matchup, it's Timothy Wu against Luis Salvato. Bant, oh, sorry. Golgari Adventures versus Sultai Sacrifice. The Argentinian uh, Mythic Champion here, winning a Mythic Championship at Pro Tour Bilbao a couple of years back. The format, of course, modern there, and the Argentinian has done well for himself since then. Timothy Wu, an American here, familiar face for many, and uh, he's on Sultai Sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, and here we are, if you're just tuning in, if you're tuning here, we're looking at a green-black mid-range fest. Essentially, both players have multiple card advantage engines. Salvados, Edgewell Innkeeper, and Adventure Keachers. Timothy Wu, we're looking at a, more tri a cat going into an oven yep. over and over again. Yeah, we've seen this already on the Feature Match Tales. Super, super sweet strategy. You're going to see it here again. A lot of synergy between uh, cards like Witch's Oven. Uh, we've seen, uh, of course, Gilded Goose. We all know that's uh, what that card's about. Cauldron Familiar. But Trail of Crumbs is the card that I'm really, really excited to see doing some work in Constructed. Not one that I had my eye on heading into Throne of Eldraine Standard. But it's a real house of an engine, man. It really gets the cards flowing. Yeah, and, and as the tournament progresses, I'm actually interested in, in seeing, because this is a very different variant of the Oko decks. It uses an Oko in, in kind of the grindiest engine possible, whereas the other Oko decks are, you know, trying to accelerate as quickly as possible into Oko, Thief of Crowns, or, or uh, Nissa, who shakes the world. This deck, it's more value. Yeah. It doesn't go quite as big. It just it can grind out a long game through more or less anything, live game cards or everything else like that. It's fantastic. And uh, one of the really interesting angles that this deck has, of course, is that it actually it can't deck itself. It, it can go that long, right? And it will not lose to decking because of Murderous Rider. Oh, well, yeah, you start looping Murderous Riders, yep. killing them you, and having food so you still gain life. You get to a point where you cast Murderous Rider, uh, you uh, sacrifice it, or then, sorry, you cast Swift End, you cast Murderous Rider, you sacrifice it to your oven, it goes to the bottom of your deck, and ultimately you'll just end up with three Murderous Riders as your, as your entire graveyard, as your entire deck. Yeah, kill anything you need, but... Wait, was that, yeah, Legion's and Cauldron's Familiar, one of the very, one of the, very the, the unique yeah. answer in... One Lee's of the very few, yeah. yeah. And uh, snags at least one of them there. And, so. and, and gets in, killing Oko Fief of Crowns, and that's the really important deal. Rather than Murderous Riding in Oko, you get on top of that to get rid of the Cauldron Familiar engine. And that holds back that uh, swift end in case there's a second copy of Oko coming down. So Salvato powering forward, putting himself in the driver's seat here. And I love to see this, Gol this Golgari Adventures deck. It's been around for a while. Uh, it, it plays, it can, it can be tuned, Eduardo, in a number of ways. I've played 20 land versions that uh, with, with curves that stop at 3. Uh, this one does go a little bit bigger, all the way up to Find Finality, and it's got cards like Vraska, it's got uh, the Elder Spell, Liliana Dreadhorde General. So this one a lot larger, a lot more mid-rangey, but I mean, look man, all I want to do, all I want to do in life, Eduardo, is cast Valmire Knight with an Edgewall Innkeeper out. Is that so much to ask? Is that I, so much to ask? I think you can still do that. I mean, that's all I want to do in life, to be honest, and this, this is the deck that allows you to do it here. Salvato... Uh, Doing pretty well for himself, it has to be said, even in the face of this Vraska. Yeah, the Vraska will easily go down to an attack. And, and I do want to point out, compared to the Celestia's Adventures deck, Celestia's Adventure card has the Snowball. So you can't really keep your adventure creatures in hand. We saw Thomas Hedricks in a game without Innkeeper having to deploy the threats quickly. But in this game, Falamari Knight is just going to stick around there on the top. And, and probably Salvato will leave it there until an Innkeeper comes yep. down. And I We're like going to wait for value. I like that. This is, I mean... I like Foul My Knight as it is already, as this kind of weird, baleful Strix-like card. But when you're casting it as a one-mana one with, with Death Touch that draws a card, oh my goodness, oh my goodness! Just you can just you can check my ticket on the value train all you like, but I'm I'm just staying. I'm going around on a loop in this one. Yeah, I'm still a pretty big fan of Trello Crumbs and the Food Engine. Which one? Trail of Crumbs is just yeah. I mean we've we've already seen it on on camera, just providing both card advantage and card selection in a deck that is very, very glad to have both. Yeah. And, 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 it, and actually, Trail of Crumbs is one of the biggest uh, reasons Raska Golgari Queen is going to be excellent in this matchup. The Golgari Adventures deck is actually relatively weak to something like Witch's Oven plus Cauldron's Familiar or 
uh, Trail of Crumbs, mm -hmm. and Vraska is one of the very few answers to that. Uh, again, Luis Salvato is trying to get to the ultra late game mm -hmm. because you mentioned the Elder Spell, you mentioned Liliana, but think of both together. Yes, very, very powerful indeed. And of course, an, a Liliana ultimate is, is going to make it very difficult, especially for a mid-range deck that wants to put a lot of permanence onto the battlefield. going to make it very difficult for them to come back. Yeah, and you saw here Timothy Wu not play Trail of Crumbs last turn because the goal was, I'm going to make Trail of Crumbs, I'm going to sack the food, and I'm going to get value. Immediate value, yeah. Right. Not going to expose it to that uh, something like a, a Vraska, which I think is actually in Salvato's hand right now. So very uh, so a heads-up play there from Wu. Let's see if he does that right now. Yeah, I suspect we'll see here Timothy Wu just pay two life and pass the turn mm -hmm. in order to, you know, sacrifice the food, get value. If there's no Vraska, then... Uh, Tim Wu can kind of build value, and if there is one, you at least kind of cashed it in. Now he, you know, you, I, I was going to say he's on a bit of a clock here with the with the two one and the one one getting in, but not really, right? That's only three a turn. I mean, a, f a single food token per turn is making up that difference here. So Salvato does need to get on the board. Love struck beast in hand. That's a nice way for him to do that. Let's see if that's the uh, the course he takes. No, it's going to be Vraska, the Golgari Queen instead. Yeah, in a grindy matchup like this, you want to shut down every single sort of card advantage you can as fast as possible. Okay. So you're going to see the players prioritize uh, getting rid of card advantage engines first and foremost. Rather than attacking the uh, the life total. All right, so here is that activation of the Trail of Crumbs. Ooh, two great options here for Wu, both a murderous rider and that cauldron familiar. So let's see what the American wants to go for here in hand for him. A Vraska of his own, Noxious Grasp, and a Witch's Oven. So he's uh, he's looking pretty good here. Yeah, and I understand picking up the Murderous Rider here over the Cauldron's Familiar because even with Witch's Oven, you don't have access to uh, Trill of Crumbs since I was targeted by Vraska. So Timothy Wu just getting the like point blank more powerful card and realizing eventually I will get to my synergy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just that recurring a, a cat is not really going to get us anywhere. No, I mean, he does need to establish himself more uh, more concretely in this game at the moment. He doesn't have the board position. Eduardo, you talked to me as we headed into this tournament about the importance of, of board control and uh, and maintaining a uh, you know a very firm presence on the battlefield. And right now, I think that's what Wu's looking to do is he takes care of uh, Vraska, the Golgari Queen. She loses her throne. Yeah, and had to lose the throne because that's card advantage again. And so now we just see the 2-3 coming down. So exactly as you said, Eduardo, the players both contesting the engine cards of their opponents. Yeah, because once a player doesn't have an engine card and the other does, that, you're going to see that player just move ahead. So if you're not experienced in this type of matchup, a player with an engine and a player without, like it won't look like much happens turn after turn, but the player with the engine will pull further and further ahead and take it down. And one engine in particular that Luis Salvato just doesn't have an answer to are those castle locked wains yeah. sitting down there in Timothy Wu's mana base because we talked about you talked about the fact that it's not really a land that you want in control but in mid-range with cheap cards like Witches Oven and Cold and Familiar mm -hmm. much more at home absolutely especially when you're playing with a you know mostly off the top of your library which mid-range decks will often do and Salvato, I mean he he does have a castle oh he got two castle locked wains of his own but uh, right now None of them active. Let's see what his next move is here. The Argentinian looking to deploy what looks like a five drop here. Is, is, is it Luis is deploying it, Massacre Girl? Is it Massacre Girl just to take care of that 2-3? It's going gonna, it's gonna to ruin his own board here. Is that the play? All right. Well, look, I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing with a bloke who's, uh, you know, been around the traps like this. That was, he, okay, that was, whoa. I mean, he really obviously respects the 2-3 and also wants to get himself on the board, put some pressure on with that 4-4. Four, four. That, that just showcases how important the board is. If, yeah. if, you're, if you're willing to massacre girl more creatures on your side, the 4-4 four, four menace is what matters. Yeah, and also getting rid of, I mean, so he hasn't actually improved the amount of power he had on the board with that massacre girl play. He had two power anyway, but he's improved his ability to push through damage. He's improved, he's improved his ability to pressure his opponent there. So, I mean... Uh, kind of a weird play. I did kill one of his uh, one of his opponent's creatures. I guess that's the main thing. Uh, but now, Trail of Crumbs is back online for Timothy Wu. And, and the main reason for that isn't because Luis Salvato is trying to pressure Timothy Wu's life toll. It's because Luis Salvato wants to pressure any possible Planeswalker that would come down. That's what matters. So up next for Wu, going to continue to churn through those food tokens, find some more pressure. Let's have a look at what he's got here. Uh, a land of, of choice. This is just two lands there. I saw at least a breeding pool. The other one looks like an overgrown tomb. Now, of course, Trail of Crumbs. We've been caught out by this, Eduardo. It can only fetch permanence. Yeah. 
So it can't, uh, can't pick up something like a Once Upon a Time, can't pick up something like a Noxious Grasp. And, and, and you see uh, Tim Wu running out the Witch's Oven, uh, which you may not see against Oko decks as often in a spot like this, uh, just because there's no, uh, you know, there's no Oko in Luis Salvato's deck. You're not going to be able to deal with that artifact unless you draw the exact second Vraska. Jeez. Look, look at it. Yes, look, an innkeeper would be unreal. Salvato's got the troops all out on an adventure here. Yeah, they're just waiting for, like, uh, the tavern to open. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. I never thought about it like that. They're going to return from their adventure, and, of course, all they want is a tall glass, tall, a horn of mead. Inkeep, bring me a horn of... Well, bring me four horns of mead right now. He's going to be drawing tons of cards. And uh, looks like Salvato is going to at least bring one of those adventurers back home here. The Foul Knight as a 1-1. One -one, probably not very impressive in this matchup, I would say, with all the Cauldron Familiars, but against something like Gruul... Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? And here this is a complicated Okay, so I'm trying to you know, I'm trying to piece together what the plan is. And Luis Salvato might have noticed those castle lock twins and we're gone. I just need to deal pressure because I'm not gonna beat this card in the late game, most likely. I could, but probably not. I'm probably not gonna beat the Witch's Oven Cauldron's Familiar Engine. So I have to put as bad a pressure as I can, but at least it's pressure. And that's why I see these plays. And he's also you know, aware that Timothy Wu has probably answers to Love Struck Beast in the form of a combination of Noxus Grass or Murderous Rider. So that's... Mm -hmm. And we know, of course, as you can see on the screen, that Wu's sitting on two copies of Noxious Grasp, and that'll be at the forefront of Salvato's mind. He's not going to walk into those cards. He's going to recognize and respect them. It's kind of un one unfortunate thing there for Timothy Wu was drawing Wicked Wolf after sacrificing your food, but he still take it, I think, here. I would believe here. And the Wicked Wolf going to eat up a human. So back to Salvato now. In hand for him, Murderous Rider Noxious Grasp. So he does have an answer to that Wicked Wolf as it stands. And I think you just take the opportunity to take the wolf out of business, right? Um, you could, but you don't need to. As long as you keep two mana up for Noxious Grasp, you can always respond to any of Timothy Wu's plays. There's right, not really right. a creature that's going to come but, but, and beat. But that's what I'm saying. You, yeah. you want to take the wolf out before Wu has had a chance to make any more food tokens. So I think we'll see a Noxious Grasp in response to anything from, from Oko to, Gold, uh, to Gilded Goose to anything that's going to make a food token. Right, for sure. And, and you don't do it during your own turn because you want to make sure the Witch's Oven is at least tapped. But, yeah, if we see Oko from Timothy Wu, we're definitely going to see a response from yeah. Salvato. Actually, I'm not so sure. You do need to put, you do need to get rid of this Oko. But with two Murderous Riders in hand, I would suspect that Salvato's just waiting for what is the activation. Yeah, so yep. forcing the Oko to activate first and make the ability, uh, you know, force the ability rather than go like, I'm going to kill your Wicked Wolf. So clearly an Elk Massacre Girl would be a better play. But this way... I'm going to force you to make maybe a play that wasn't the best. So Salvato isn't going to gain the life off the Noxious Grasp there. I think he actually adjusted the life total, so we uh, we should make sure that that wasn't the case because uh, the spell was, was countered. It fizzled after the Wicked Wolf uh, was removed. Yeah, and look at how bad these Noxious Grasps are. I mean, they will get rid of the, Nox the Love Struck Beast, but it's pretty much it. Uh, although that means that Oko does won't go down to combat damage, and Luis Salvato will have to expand a Murderous Rider for it. Now, I want to talk about something interesting about Wu's deck here. And, and, you know, we talk about different types of constraints in games of Magic. We talk about, uh, you know, limits on your resource. Um, so often one of them is uh, the tap ability being... Uh, the tap uh, being, being used as an ability. You can only use it once per turn. See that on Witch's Oven. Another one is mana. And as we see Noxious Grasp take out this Love Struck Beast after the attack, I want to point out that Timothy Wu's value engine has this perfect split of abilities that require different resources. The Trail of Crumbs wants mana. The Witch's Oven can be activated once a turn with its tap ability. It's not a man mana-hungry engine. It's not, a, it's not an engine that actually requires a whole lot of fuel to be put into it because of that tap ability, because of that cheap activation of the Trail of Crumbs. So... My point here is, once you've got to the very late game, you've got like 10 lands out, you're looking at, you can look at board states where you have multiple activations of the Trailer Crumbs, especially when you've got multiple sacrifice outlets like Gilded Goose. Right, and, and they help each other, right? A Trail mm. of Crumbs gets another, a Gilded Goose helps the Trail of Crumbs get more. Exactly. Goose. Perfect timing. Oh. Symbiosis, beautiful. Love to see it. Here's the Murderous Rider now, Oko. 
Stole one too many crowns for his own good, but a planeswalker still in hand here for Wu. The American sitting on a copy of Vraska Gogra. Well, not sitting on it. That would be that would be a, quite a that's, that'd be considered a faux pas in col in uh, the culture of Magic. Look at how much. Um I mean, look at the pressure that this Massacre Girl has done on Timothy Wu. It's actually kind of unusual to see it live this long. And I'm also surprised to see Vraska come down. But it kind of makes sense. Timothy Wu has seen, uh, we can see it in the graveyard, a noxious grass. There was a murderous rider potentially feeling, you know what, I could put Vraska down. Probably Luis Salvato is low on direct ways to get rid of walkers. So check this. Yeah. Sorry, go on, Eduardo. Yeah. So yeah, Vraska drawing a card. And you get selection on top. That's what I want to say. What a, what a sick value play here. Because Trail of Crumbs doesn't care about how you sacrifice the food. You can sacrifice to a Wicked Wolf. You can sacrifice it to a, a Goose. You can sacrifice it, obviously, for life as well. But any way that it gets sacrificed, it's still going to trigger the Trail of Crumbs. And we're seeing it there. So that, that's, just, that's, just, that's just free real estate. Yeah. Love to see that. As long as, you know, the Trail of Crumbs only cares that someone ate some the food. Yeah. yeah. Not exactly who. Doesn't matter where it's gone. Doesn't matter where it's gone. As long as someone's eating, the Trail of Crumbs is happy. And here is Gilded Goose now. So Timothy Wu opening up the doors to the larder. And finally, a witch's oven. That's Timothy Wu's kitchen nightmares here as we head back to Luis Salvato. Yeah, and Luis Salvato, I mean, keeps drawing resources, but there's nothing that's really pulling Luis ahead. Luis Salvato really wants that Edgewell Innkeeper, yeah. because it's one of the few cards that will allow him to go way above Timothy Wu's engine. Well, that said, he wants to keep pace, right? And he needs a card, card advantage engine of his own. It, it just hasn't found it yet, honestly. And, and look, I mean, Timothy Wu's at free life, but you got a Vraska, you got a Gilded Goose, you got a Witch's Oven and a bunch of food. We're not dying anytime uh, uh, soon. No, that's it. I mean, it's you know, sort of combo assembled here. The whole the whole gang's here. We just need that Oko to really take things to the next level. This is uh, this is more or less exactly where Wu wants to be. He's not under a lot of pressure. He's assembled these highly synergistic. I, cards. I mean, by the way, look at this motley crew of stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got an oven. Here. We got a geese. Yeah, we, got, yeah. we got we got like a queen that's sitting next to some food and like yeah. crumbs on the side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a band of misfits and freaks. I love it. Yeah, this is what Oko was meant to do. Get oh, cat back. <laughs> is this is this what was in the mind of R and D as they designed the car? They're like, ah, I tell you what, once someone breaks it in half and starts including it with Witch's Oven and Vraska and ah, oh, Trailer Crumbs. Yeah. This is exactly why you That's, want the card. This is you may not like it, but this is what peak standard looks like, my friends. Here's Murderous Rider. I think that's in the upkeep here. Going to take care of, of Vraska. Jo jokes aside, I think the Sultai Sacrifice deck might have been an amazing choice this weekend. If it can, like, essentially play a similar game plan to the Oko decks, but be far more grindy when people are trying to put in conditional answers, then this deck might have what it takes to go over the top. This might have been the hidden gem of the week. Mm. It's a bit yeah. early, of course, and we've this is by our third round of standard, but as the weekend progresses, I'm interested to see how far it goes. And Massacre Girl can't get rid of the other one, so I, I saw it off the Once Upon a Time. Mm -hmm. No, it can get as high as what minus three, minus three to all creatures. That's not going to do it. No, That's but not it is a, do it. And and because you have to reveal it, not really something. Actually, what it can do. Here you go. You ready for the tech? You ready for the top shelf tech with Riley Knight? He can play the massacre girl, right? Put the trigger on the stack. After the first one has resolved, and all the other triggers from the Falmire Knight, and uh, which will then kill the Gilded yes. Goose, he can sacrifice his own massacre girl to the witch's oven. I'm trying to figure that out. I believe that I like reading cards. Okay. All right. You read all the cards. I'm, I'm just calling it. I thought about Well, I it didn't even think about it. I so just said it's going to work, kinda, and I'm sticking to it. Kind of finally, it does mention other twice, but it can, yeah, if it dies, it works. Hmm? You were right. That would have been the, that would have been a sweet play. That would have been the that would have been top shelf. Welcome to another episode of Top Shelf Tech with Riley Knight. It's my new fa it's my new segment. Like and subscribe. Please comment below. But what about having a kitty? That also, witch, I mean, two witches oven. I mean, I'd always, I'd always rather a cat. Cats are, cats are a supremely high tier animal. Yeah. If, if Timothy Wu can find a second one, that would be absolutely stellar. But oh. look at this engine. You get to sacrifice food to the cat, and yeah. for one mana, drain. drain oh, yeah. Get another permanent, and continue. Yep. Basically, draw a card, drain you a life, and and at such a low cost. And again, the thing I was. Oh, and there's about a wicked wolf. All right, that's a nice one. That's a nice one here. They'll get value off the Trillo crumbs, but if it's to take Massacre Girl off the field, 
probably worth it. So, fight the Massacre Girl, eat up a food token, and still, ah, oh, the tech still has the mana. For, for oh, a, Gilded for a, Goose, of course. Yeah, for course. a trail of crumbs, love it. So another card off the top as well. Timothy Wu firing on all cylinders here. But what about the food we sacrificed to the Gilded Goose? We don't have mana for that. Nah, that's a shame. <laughs> that is a shame. Doesn't get, doesn't get full value, but whatever, still counts. Still good. Oh, another kitty. All right, things looking good here for Wu, who seems to have we're, turned a corner. We're cooking, Salvato, we're cooking animals here. Uh, I don't want to get too deep into the, the flavor of this game here, but what we need here for Luis Salvato, we need an edge wall innkeeper. That's what he's interested in. The, the, I mean, really, that is all he's interested yep, in. Yep. I don't think uh, he's found it, however. No, we're going to start casting creatures out of the, out of the adventure zone here. Griffin, uh, uh, Griffin uh, McAree, our dungeon master, is, is, is sending these creatures into the fray. I mean, a little Yana uh, Dreadhorde General might have helped as well, since there's not really an easy way for Timothy Wu to put pressure. And at that point, Tim uh, would have just been forced to try to get to a murderous rider yeah. this, with very little, honestly, other options. And that would have been the card that earlier would have put Luis Salvato in a decent shape. So after sitting on those cards in adventure in the adventure zone for quite a while now, Salvato does put them into play. So he is recognizing the need to contest the board. That Wicked Wolf, of course, at the moment is the biggest, baddest thumper on the battlefield. Look, Timothy Wu didn't barely attack this game, and Luis Salvato's 11 between murderous riders and uh, cauldron familiar triggers. I mean, now Timothy Wu could attack with that Wicked Wolf and deny life gain with a bunch of cats blocking the life-linking murderous rider. And yeah, Witch's Oven's going to probably make sure Timothy Wu can't really die since you can always sacrifice the food for mana yeah. and life gain. And this is exactly what, what Timothy wants to... He, I mean, he came to this tournament knowing he was going to play a bunch of long, grindy games. And, you know, I reckon Salvato thought he was ready for this sort of stuff as well. I reckon he says, I mean, how, how are they ever going to beat Edgewell Inkip? How are they going to beat Liliana Dreadhorde General? Well... I tell you, Luis, how they're going to beat it. They're going to beat it by you not drawing it, buddy. But <laughs> Luis is facing a huge uphill battle because Timothy Wu's deck is just do even without Oko, is just doing exactly what he wants to do. And Oko is a support. He's he's a best supporting actor in this deck. He's not winning the Oscar. But himself. like, look here, Luis Salvador just sees the line. Yeah. He just sees that things are kind of drawing to a close and decides to concede. Because, you know, there's 28 minutes on the clock. you got to win two more. Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, that's going to be a hallmark of many of these uh, long, grindy, mid-range games. There's a lot of meat on those bones. There's a lot of stuff to get across. And as we bring it back to the booth, my friends, that was game number one. we got a lot more where that came from. Don't even worry about it. We are going to take a quick break, get things set up for game number two between Salvato and Wu. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back live from Richmond at Mythic Championship 6 after this. My favorite thing to, to draft in Throne of Eldraine uh, is Mono Red. Um, we saw Seth Manfield's preview where he was like, take all the seven dwarves, and I am absolutely taking each and every one of those seven dwarves. I mostly enjoy winning games of Magic the Gathering, so I'm trying to stay open in a draft and do a draft a good deck to do so. All right, my favorite thing to do in Throne of Eldraine draft is probably Mono Black. You just get all the value, you get to do the food synergies, you get to play powerful hybrid cards and just kind of grind people out with like, Forever Youngs and, and other recursion from your graveyard while you get to also have the best removal with like, you know, bake into a pie and get to, you know, taste tasty tasty pie, but also sometimes you get Witch's Oven plus the cat, called her familiar, and you can keep looping those. It's just sweet and lots of value and grindy games. It's pretty fun. My favorite thing to do in Throne of Aldrain is drafting aggro non humans. My favorite thing to do in Throne of Aldrain draft is opening a pack and see which are the best green cards. And uh, that usually happens with me first picking a Fierce Witch Stalker. I believe uh, almost uh, all my drafts have been green, have been both green then somehow. Fierce Witch Stalker and Automasso are just big overperformer. Also Marley Rider, the combo Marley Rider plus uh, a food, to uh, food uh, token and an Automasso just killing two creatures on turn four. It's just it's pretty great and this is exactly what I want to do. Well, I love when I finish in monocolor deck with a lot of uh, Damantum cards. So that's really fun for sure. I like mono green aggro decks. The, all the commons are very good. That's what I like to do in, in this draft format. My favorite thing to do in Throne of Eldraine Limited is return creatures from my graveyard to my hand. Forever Young is one of my favorite commons. My favorite thing to do in Throne of Eldraine draft is seven dwarves. I don't want five, I don't want six, I want all seven. I'm greedy. 
My favorite thing to do in Throne of Eldraine draft is actually just to move all in on one of the really fun strategies, oftentimes monocolor. It's something that you don't get to do in every draft format. Um, the fact you've picked a couple green cards and now like some nice red card comes along, something like that, and you go, you know what, I'm going to give myself a chance to stay mono green, that kind of thing. So I think that's really fun because it's different, it feels somewhat fresh. Um, so I like being aggressive, and I like being aggressive in terms of how I draft, and sticking with one of those Molokar strategies is one example that sometimes comes up that I really like. Welcome back to the booth here at the Championship 6. My name is Riley Knight, joined by Eduardo Sage Gallic. And Eduardo, we're going to head right back, back down to the feature match area for a live look in at one of our back tables. We're going to have a look at the game between Etienne Terrani and Gregor Kowalski. Kowalski, of course, a famed member of the MPL. And he's on Jesko Fires. I love this deck, Eduardo, and I'm very excited to see one of the best players in the world get it done in the feature match area. Yeah, and, and this is an exciting matchup. Azor we have straight up blue white control, Azorius control versus Jeskai Fires. Mm, mm, mm. And we've seen, uh, we've already seen a little bit of, uh, a little bit of blue white nonsense in the feature match area already. We've seen, I mean, we've seen Esper nonsense as well with Dance of the Mance. But uh, white blue's taken a back seat in recent months, recent years, and uh, there are a few players, Tirani, uh, Etienne Tirani, amongst them, who want to bring it, uh, bring it right back. Yeah, I, 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 and you know, with the performance in the Goya second place of Azorius control. Uh, it showcases that the strategy can have legs. If less people play Teferi, Time Raveler well absorb starts being pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, intrinsically though, the matchup should favor the Azorius Control deck, since the deck with Fires Invention does get the double spell, but only on the nut draw. So if Fires of Invention is a problem, you can get rid of that, and if your opponent's light on resources, you can just get rid of the other resources. So Cavalier of Flame getting busy here. Looks like Kowalski has got a copy of uh, Kenrith, but I, uh, but I think he sniffed out the time wipe. I think he sniffed out, sniffed out the time wipe here. And the Cavalier of Flames looks like his trigger is going after Teferi. And I love this from Kowalski. Got in there, attack could have gone for more value, had the Kenrith, could have given it haste, but no. Instead, now we're going to see the post time wipe uh, rebuild Eduardo, which is uh, going to favor the Polish player quite nicely here. Yeah, and, and I mean, this game is looking like it could take a while. You got Etienne that has access to a bunch of card draw. I think I saw Chemister's inside in hand. The Brazen Barrow came back. I mean, Kowalski is already going towards the side. Oh, I, just I, wanna, I just want to. I just want to see what the card is. I love this, man. Fay of Wishes, go and get is Casualties that... of War. And just go to Wait. town. Oh my goodness, he's we gonna got get a prison so realm. We got a Teferi. He's gonna get so much value. I just want to watch this before he's we gonna, head back to table eight. He is gonna blow up land, planeswalker, and enchantment. Get back what looks like a cavalier of flames there as well from Or this. no, change of plans. Okay, instead we'll, we're gonna go for Chandra. Can't be counted. Start going upstairs with the uh, with the emblems. And that's actually gonna clean Tarani up very quickly indeed. He's only on six. Yeah, but we know there's a Brazen Borrow, but again, because it can be bounced, it's kind of interesting how K Kowalski went, you know what? Casualties of War is not what I want. No. I want to build towards a much later game and, a mu and an inevitable one. Well, and, yeah, the inevitability is really the thing here because the Frenchman on a six-turn clock is going to start taking one damage a turn off of that Chandra, and there's nothing you can do about it. Even if he bounces the Chandra, and even if he somehow prevents it from coming back into play, which I don't know how he does that. It can't be countered. Apart from something like, oh, what oh, about this? Okay, what about this? <laughs> <laughs> that is certainly an answer. That is certainly an answer. The Chandra go is going to be nicked by this uh, agent of treachery, and it goes straight upstairs, and now it's Kowalski, who the, the, the shoe is on the other foot. And, and by the way, Teferi can bounce back the agent of treachery if anything of uh, trouble comes. All right, so here is Castle Vantress. Scry for Kowalski leaves one on top, so that's got to be a good one for him there. Yeah, with Kowalski a little... It's kind of even, but you have Kenrith, but there's a blocker. You want to give Kenrith haste, and you want to get rid of the blocker, and that might be enough for... Ko oh! So Cavalier of Flames plus the Kenrith here. As we see, discard a land and pick up now. Here's the return, Kenrith, the return king. And of course, can use that fire breathing ability or just start dumping mana into Kenrith. But no, it's going to be the fire breathing ability of the Cavalier of Flames that also gives the creatures haste, and in they come. 
and then they come. This is a lot of damage, and uh, Tirani taking one in his upkeep. He has to start. He has to. Is he just dead? That's He's it. just dead. He, he doesn't have enough to block. So, wow, what a stunning conclusion to that game. What a, there. What a nice end. <laughs> it was very, very cool. Bit of back and forth there as we head now back to our front table. Man, I love that Jesco Fires deck, dude. I just love that Jesco Fires list. It is so, so sweet. I mean, just the, the wish board. You go and get the card you want, you blast it into play. Man, I'm looking forward to playing a lot more of that deck in the coming weeks. Right now, however, we are back to Luis Salvato on Golgari Adventures, facing off against Timothy Wu, who is playing Sultai Sacrifice. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about Luis Salvato's deck. If you've just joined us, welcome. Welcome, by all means, welcome. But uh, we're very much in a slower, more mid-range-focused uh, Golgari zone here. This Adventures deck, we've seen it, very low curve versions. This is not one of them. It goes all the way up to some pretty expensive cuts. Yeah, Golgari Adventure here from Luis Salvato. The big thing, the headline act in the main deck is Lilia Dr Dreadhorde General plus the Elder Spell as a way to fight Planeswalkers and have that kind of combo finish towards the ultimate. Sideboard, though, you're going to see a lot of cheap cards, especially those free veils of summer. Uh, we might also see something like a Duress uh, coming in here. So Wu now holding these cards uh, upside down in his hand, a power move to be sure. Back to Salvato, who has uh, played the beauty half of Beauty and the Beast there. Love Struck Beast still waiting in the adventure zone. And now for three mana. What's the chop, old son? Looks like he's got a Legion's End in hand, but cho chooses just to play the 5-5. Five five. For free? That's free mana, 5-5? Five five. That sounds good. I mean, it sounds good, but don't you want to go off the, the Cauldron Familiar there with the let's with see. the Legion's End? I'm pretty sure he's got a Legion's End in hand. Yeah, he does. Legion's End. Let's see here. It's kind of a diff... The thing is, that if that Goose was in play, mm. you're still walking into a potential Veil of Summer. Right, right, okay. So that might be why you didn't see it. Even even though Timothy Wu doesn't you know, have access to the card, both players are going to be very, very aware of the existence of Veil of Summer because that's a blowout. So you know what? Why not put pressure first when you're, and then use it when your opponent's tapped out? But this is going to be really bad news. If Timothy Wu deploys Vraska... Well, you can get rid of it. You can Legion's End, Cauldron's Familiar, and then attack the Vraska for one with uh, the Lovestrix Beats, well, Lover, essentially. With the here little 1-1 one, one human token here. So it's uh, Oko going upstairs. And uh, so how is this going to work out here for... for By leaving up that Golden Goose, or Gilded Goose, he's, he's sending a... Wu's sending a pretty clear message here. Yeah, and this is an interesting spot from Salvato's side because if you Legion's end the Cauldron Familiar and there's a Veil of Summer, you do get to get rid of Oko. Uh, if you don't think Timothy Wu has Veil of Summer, you are just straight up murderous rider the Oko. Maybe attacking first and, and getting stuff off the board. Although the Cauldron's Familiar would just trade with the human or absorb the Lustrak Beast. So that's why you see Noxus Grasp here. I think Luis Salvato knows that by going Legion's end on Cauldron Familiar, that's maybe not the best spot decides to do this instead. So now the Love Struck Beast, ready to party. Also by kill, getting rid of Oko pre-combat, you know if you need to rumble into Oko or can just go after Timothy Wu's life toll. And the Cauldron Familiar, familiar living up to its reputation as an all-star chump blocker. And then coming back once again with food. I mean, this works with some cats, I've noticed. Like some cats, you can just give them a bit of ham and they'll do anything, but I don't know, man. I think... Bringing back a creature from the bin with food, it's just a dog every time. Like, dogs will do anything for a bit of, for a little schmacko. Dogs will do anything but a bit of food. I mean, my cat's always hungry. Yeah, but, I mean, cats have such a wide range of temperaments, you know? Not all cats are going to do what you want. Right, but this cat eats food. This cat, lo <laughs> this cat loves a little, a little, uh, little cat treat there. All right, but, yeah. here's Oko now, going upstairs once again. Yeah, it's worth pointing out, Tim, if you didn't have to return to the Cauldron's Familiar end of turn unless you felt that you were going to attack with it, which might have been the consideration. Okay, well, instead now, Gilded Goose going to play another Goose, replace the food token that was just lost. And here's the Veil of Summer. So that's going to cycle. Cycle because of the Oko that was cast, yes. 
Yeah, some, sometimes, like, Luis Salvador was low on mana, mm. so decided, you know what, I just yeah. want to draw more and, lands. And I like that. I think he needs to con continue to develop his mana. He needs to continue to find lands. He's got a hand that is ready to be deployed. He's got Legion's End, Order of Midnight, Foulmire Knight, ready to get on the battlefield here. Yeah, just put me I, in, coach. This, I just put me in. I think we're going to start with Murderous riding that Oko, though. We, we might attack first, but that's about it. So, swift end now. A swift end. It's very hard sometimes to say, but yeah, I said murderous writing. I did mean swift death. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone knows what you're talking about, really. Yes. I'm just I'm just nitpicking. Technically correct, as we all know, is the best kind of correct. It's the only kind of correct. Ah. Is it? We're getting into some deep philosophical stuff here, man. What is life? What is a table? See, that was some profane insight right there. They are very good. <laughs> oh, I love it. Love it. Absolutely. All right. Back to Wu now. Uh, he is also kind of struggling to pull together the lands he needs to uh, enact his game plan. Yeah, and here a Massacre Girl from Timothy Wu could wipe the board, I believe, uh, since... Well, let's see. Yeah, there's four of her creatures in the original trigger, so that would do it. However, by doing so, you'd get rid of pretty much your fourth mana source mm. and above, which is a problem. And Vraska here would be a nice deployment, getting rid of Luststruck Beast, but would just get taken down easily. So it's not actually that comfortable a spot uh, for Tim Wu here. You could also just Noxus Grass the Lost Oak Beast after you once upon a time. So I like kind of like this double spelling this turn, trying yeah. to deploy towards more mana. And trying to find more lands, I think, is the yeah. key thing here. And as you can see, that Watery Grave left open to power out something like a Noxious Grass, but very handy forest off the top for the American now. And yeah. that means the end of the Lovestruck Beast, Lovestruck Beast's sad tale. Yeah, both players have played probably against Veil of Summer enough that they're not waiting until their opponent untaps the <laughs> yeah, 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 of course, of course. Yes, there's the Elder Spell off the top. That's a nice one. By the way, that Legion's End might be pretty strong here because you get rid of Double Geese. Double Goose, yep. It kills both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Technically exiles yeah. them, but yeah. good enough. But Wu is just like, yeah, look, you got me. You got me. It kills both of them. It does. It does, Timothy Wu. Both of them straight to the exile zone. No further bonuses upstairs, however. And now in they come. Two damage clipping across for Timothy Wu. Follow-up play. We're going to see an Order of Midnight bring back the Love Struck Beast so the value train begins to pick up some steam. Yeah, it's all about that value and pressure. Uh, if uh, Timothy Wu... Oh, another Oko. Now we can start making... This deck usually just makes food with Oko, but this might be one of the first turns where Oko starts making a creature just for defense purposes. Although at 6 loyalty, you don't actually need to do that. So Thief of Crowns. Looks like we're going to see it Elkify the food here. So that Roast Pig turns into a, an Antlered elk, elk here. Yeah, and decides to swing in because with, between Oko at 5 loyalty and access to Cauldron's Familiar pl in the graveyard, you, you know, you kind of get what you need. And, 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 and Luis Salvado does have the answer, well, the answers, the Elder Spell or Swift End would both take care of Oko. The Elder Spell being the more conditional one, um, while uh, Murder Stride is a little more universal. However, and, and I don't think Salvato's going to be able to pull the combo of Planeswalker plus the Elder Spell here. And that's the consideration is, do I play the more conditional card, which is normally what I'd want to do in a spot like this? Or do I try to get absolute full value, draw into something like a Vraska Golgari Queen plus Elder Spell? Now, it's important to note that the Elder Spell only requires you to target your opponent's uh, Planeswalkers here. And, and interestingly, by the way, uh, Luis Salvato attacks Oko with both creatures first in order to incentivize Timothy Wu to get back that Cauldron's Familiar and yep. force the hand. Yep. So you can tell how, I mean, life isn't what matters. What matters is board position. So that's why you see Luis Salvato seemingly throwing away damage, but it's just to bait Timothy Wu into getting that, cold, that food off the board. So four mana now. And it's going to be a murderous rider, oh, sorry, a love struck beast plus the human. Now, what I was going to say, Eduardo, it's important to note that the Elder Spell, it only requires you to target your opponent's creatures, or op opponent's planeswalkers. You don't have to have a planeswalker of your own right, to that, cast it. I mean, it could be worded right, that way, right? That, choose yeah, yeah. target planeswalker you control, yeah. but you don't need to do that. It just says choose a planeswalker you control. So if your opponent has like 10 planeswalkers, you can just yeah. kill all of them without one of your own. Right, that's true. Uh, it was more like a consideration. The Elder Spell only kills Planeswalkers. Murderous mm -hmm. Riders more versatile. Sure, sure, sure. 
All right, Noxious Grasp takes out that Lovestruck Beast, and the Elk is going to get in once again. I'm actually kind of surprised by um, Luis's decision, Luis Salvato's decision to leave the Oko around for a turn. Like, just genuinely surprised. I don't have much more to add. <laughs> well, thank you for your expert analysis, Eduardo Sajgal. Like, I think it's because he just knows that he can deal with it at any time. He's got two very powerful answers to it in hand. Yeah, so probably figured that the extra food wouldn't be too much of a problem. But you did see Luis uh, shaking the head, so maybe that wasn't the plan. Oh, well, here he comes. In with the foul Maya Knight. Ooh, ooh, nope, maybe not. Yeah, and here, the problem is Luis Salvato is running out of gas. Thankfully, that castle lock wing is going to help a lot. Um, wow, just decides to cast creatures. Luis Salvato, either afraid of Veil of Summer or just trying to get Oko off the board without using one of these Planeswalker killers. So, the Knights have assembled here. The Knights of the Black Table here. A slight knight sub-theme running through many of these Golgari Adventure decks. Some of the lower curve decks play, uh, play a Smitten Swordmaster, which I obviously absolutely adore. Uh, but this one, as we said, going a bit bigger, all the way up to Liliana, Dreadhorde General, and Find Finality. Yeah, which makes sense. I like but every a lot, actually. Find Finality? I like yeah. that cut a lot. Yeah, it's a very good hybrid card. It just hasn't been able to really find a home because you're so focused on the board sometimes. Well, but this is my point. Yeah. It's great. It kills all the 3-3s, three right? So does, so, thing, <laughs> so, so does Massacre Girl. But no, I think we should see more fine finality in this in this uh, situation where it kills all the 3-3s, three whether they're Elks or Lands. I, I, yeah, I think the big differentiator is once a, a Massacre Girl is tutorable, essentially, with Once Upon a Time. That's a good point, yeah. And uh, Trail of Crumbs, whereas fine finality, you kind of have to draw. And if your opponent knows about it, especially in this tournament with an open deck list and starts making 6-6s, six it's a problem. So Salvato plays out his uh, Temple of Melody there. He decides to keep it on top. Must be a good one. I mean, you've got to deal with the Soko now. I mean, yeah, it's you been around for too Oko. long it's here. It's been around for so long here. I think we're going to finally see the Swift End. Well, it wasn't a Swift End. It was a very, yeah. I'm getting ready to call a Flavor Judge here because this was not a Swift. This is a slow end. A yes. very slow end to an Oko that's been around for, what, three turns? Yeah, that, that Oko lasted in, in play longer than yeah. I thought it would. I mean, the card very clearly says Swift End, Eduardo. I'm very confused. I'm very confused. Oh, and I'm even more confused because he's going after the Murderous Rider instead. Oh, sorry, the Massacre Girl instead. We may, we may see the Elder Spell here. Salvato just doesn't care. He just doesn't care about this Oko. I mean, is Salvato trying to set up a situation where Timothy Wu plays a Vraska and he draws a Liliana and just ends it? But is, is, is Salvato essentially going, look, I'm so far behind, I just need a miracle? But in that situation, why would you not play the 2 3? If he's not cast, it, he can't cast the Elder's Sorcery. If you draw, I, I, I mean, the top card might be an Edgewall Innkeeper. Sure, that's a good point. Okay, you want to get that value? I can, I can definitely respect that. All right. And now uh, the Elkified Cauldron Familiar is going to get in. I mean, Salvato's under quite a bit of yeah, pressure. He really is on eight life after that uh, hit from the cat elk hybrid here. Yeah, and, and I mean, the cat, uh, the three Cauldron's three. familiar is no longer in the graveyard? It must be somewhere there. Or did it right. get exiled earlier? Let's see what's off the top. Oh, there it is. Okay, the yeah. Edgewall Innkeeper. Yep, well done, Eduardo. Pick that one. And now Murderous Rider is going to draw, uh, draw an extra card. So nice little bit of extra value here for the Argentinian. Off the top, that looks like a... What is that card? Thrashing Brontodon. Is it Thrashy B? It is. Yeah. It's the Thrashy B. You're right. In the land of Free Freeze, the Free Forest King. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right. And it also is a tidy answer to that Trail of Crumbs, should Salvato choose to pull the trigger on that one. But right now, built out a, a respectable board as the Argentinian, NBL player. Back to Timothy Wu now. Yeah, and you can see Luis Salvato shaking his head, not liking probably where this game has gone. I mean, he's he's been in a position where he's had an adventure zone that's just been, with creatures coming out the wazoo, he hasn't been able to draw it. This is the first edge wall innkeeper we've seen the whole match. That's true. And the, and the, the deck is, I mean, it's not quite built around the card, but I tell you what, it's it's on a whole other level once the, uh, the doors of the pub are open. I'm starting to understand what Luis Salvato's plan was, because I was very confused for a while, but it seemed like Luis Salvato's plan is just... Bait Timothy Wu into playing a Planeswalker and then Elder Spell with Liliana, and that's it. I mean, that, that's a good way to win a game of Magic, to be honest. 
I mean, it's getting to the point where Timothy Wu might be able to survive a Liliana up the ultimate and win, but. So here's the, here's the Fresca. Here's the Fresca. I mean, unfortunately, even with a top deck Liliana, the Elder yeah. Spell may not even pay off since you don't have the mana for both. Interestingly, like Timothy, we were having to decide between the Brontodon and the Innkeeper, and by choosing the Brontodon, I can tell that Timothy Wu is very focused on damage before anything else. Oko is going to tick up here to nine, and Elkify the well, I guess the the food, right? Oh, is he getting a food token? Okay. Well, we're, we're getting that sorted. Okay. All right. Well, in any case, in comes the 3-3, three, three, and we're going to see a double block. And now the innkeeper's off the table. First, second. Nope. The murderous rider goes below decks. All right. So the innkeeper remains on the battlefield. And it's going to be a food token from the Oko. So Tim Wu is really putting a lot of value or, or might have access to Noxious Grass, so at that point you get rid of Murderous Rider, but then maybe you still kill the Innkeeper. Legion's End, the pickup here for Salvato. And an attack with the Edgewall Innkeeper going the way of Braska Golgari Queen, but it's going to trade with a, with a Cauldron Familiar here. And a Trail of Crumbs going to draw a card for Timothy Wu as well. So things looking better and better for Wu as no. he uh, slowly but surely grinds out this game, Eduardo. Yeah, and the second Trail of Crumbs is going to do it. At this point, Salvato's so far behind, it's basically the Elder Spell in Liliana. There's not really much else. Or do you... Like, if he uses the Elder Spell here, like, then it's down to Castle, Castle Lockdwain. So you're deciding... All right, Castle Lockdwain off the top. It's a Vraska. So if he can survive one more turn... So Salvato down to six here. Yeah, and a very big difference from seven to six because of that's two attacks from an elk rather than uh, three. But Salvato. Yeah, just, you just have to use it. Is going to double Elder Spell. He doesn't have another turn, unfortunate as it may, may be. Would have loved to put the counters, extra counters on uh, his own Vraska. But as it is, away they go. Yeah, and, and you're going to see that Cauldron Familiar end of turn, make use of the mana, and honestly, with Luis Salvato at five life, mm. <laughs> just putting pressure, another Cauldron Familiar might just, could be the answer. Another but Trail of Crumbs as well, an option, but I think you just want to start recurring those, uh, those little kingies. It's a very weird position, but again, the Golgari Adventure deck isn't the best that recovering from a low life total, so that Cauldron Familiar is going to be a problem at five. Oh, and Witch's Oven as well. Okay, so the combo is assembled. The gang's all here. There's the trail. And now with the food token ready to go, in comes the Cauldron Familiar. Salvato down to four. That Witch's Oven was also all super important because otherwise we Salvato would have been able to Legion's and end. Three. But with that Witch's Oven... Right, wait, yeah. actually, wait, wait, wait. With Vraska Golgari Queen, you can target the Witch's Oven, and then you can Legion's End the Cauldron Familiar. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't remove the one in the graveyard, does it? Is it Hand yeah. and Graveyard? Oh, it is I believe it's graveyard. every okay, zone. Sure, sure. I oh. believe it's every zone. All right, all right, all right. It's not just, the, uh, not just Hand and, uh, and Battlefield. Okay, that's fine. So, another land off of the Trail of Crumbs. And let's have a look. There's another Witch's Oven. And that's a problem. Okay, so that's going to that's gonna take that line that we discussed out of contention here. Now, we can still uh, target the untapped Witch's Oven. Oh, uh, sure. That does make sense. Uh, actually, uh, no, it does take it out because Tim, in target, to, in response to this Witch's Oven, this is why Luis Salvato is, like, posturing, like, uh, I don't know, because he's trying to incentivize Timothy Wu to not sack the familiar, but yeah, that's but the he saw the line. <laughs> he saw the line, and at the end of the day, Timothy Wu... After a, uh, a long and laborious mid-range slugfest, Timothy Wu's deck did exactly what he wanted, and he takes it out in two games to zero. So well done to the Saltai Sacrifice player. Looks like we've got one more match to finish here as we head back over to Etienne Terrani, facing off against Gregor Kowalski. The Frenchman on the left-hand side of the table is playing white-blue control whereas Gregor Kowalski playing a personal favorite of mine in Jeskai Fires.
Giants. I think you'll find that uh, Etienne uh, Tehrani is actually playing both roles because those agents of treachery have taken care of that. No, no, no so he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, hey, I want your deck looks very cool. I want to play with it as well. And, and now a Fires of Invention is going to be gusted. It's a little Pidgey action here. Pidgey's going to cast Gust, put it back on top of the library. Yeah, if her Gust really kind of only... I mean, it can sometimes target a Wish card, but it's really just for Fires of Invention and um, Cavalier Flames. Yeah, and it does good work against both those cards. Now Kowalski in hand. It looks like he's got double Cavalier and not quite Ooh. enough red to cast it. Uh, yeah, I wonder if Kowalski could have tapped one less red mana. So instead it's going to be a Sphinx of Foresight. Remember that name. Oh, that's a card. I'll start in Ravnica Allegiance Limited. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So 4-4 four, four in the air. And Tirani on a relatively healthy 16 life. He's got a Brazen Burrower in the Exile Zone. Off on its adventure. And it looks like the judges have called time on this game. So it's going to have to be a uh, it's going to have to be a result at some point here. Otherwise, these players are going to be consigned to the baked hell of the draw bracket. Yeah. And now, yeah, I tend will get access to three more attack steps since that was called turn zero, and it's kind of hard to see Kowalski coming out when because the best things your deck can do generally involve multiple turns so you see, since with fires that's when your deck's unlocked but then you only have access to two spells a turn and unless and i think with the way the game's progressed and having access to castle ventress it's in Tarani should be easily able to find the additional yeah. cards to take it down yeah it, it, he's really got kowalski on a clock here and even kowalski's best draw uh, in a fires of invention doesn't get him out of this uh, this pickle although he does have at least one copy of cavalier of flame which pushes through a lot of damage i don't know if he's going to be able to cast a second one because that'd be huge he would need one more red mana yeah. that's it so three red mana and on the other side oh just two has access to Fires of Invention, but decides not to cast it specifically for the reason I mentioned. So Cavalier of Flame now can come in, give both creatures haste, and then pump twice. So that's a total of 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 damage. And you can tell, by the way, Kowalski's like under the clock. You're discarding Drawn from Dreams and what is essentially a controlled mirror. Mm. Yeah, normally that would be an all-star here. Yeah, so three cards. Discards three. Finds a Fae of Wishes, a land. And that Brazen Borrow also looks like an adventure on Kowalski's side. Okay, but hang on. How, how, how does this change the maths here? As we see another Fae of Wishes can give all of these haste. I, I don't think that it's quite still 11. does it. It's with still it. 11. Oh, and if Etienne has a Brazen Borrow in hand, that's kind of going to sign oh, off. Oh, so, so it is. I forgot about that one in Exile. So any, any blocks, uh, blocks on the... Uh, Fave wishes can be made there as well. So, no, uh, I think there's a second one. An another one in hand as well. Are you kidding me? Another one in hand. Is that what he's about to cast here? Oh my goodness! Here we go. Bounce this fave of wishes. End step. Is that going to be enough to push through lethal? I believe Kowalski's on so. four. What can he do? Well, he cast a brazen borrower. Yeah. Uh, got another little brazen with borrows all over the place. Things getting borrowed. Ooh, like a library up in here. And there's Teferi Time Raveler. That can also remove a blocker. And with Kowalski at four. Oh, yeah. bounce the Cavalier of Flame here I mean, with it was Teferi. All, it, it was already lethal. There and were five just attackers. to assert dominance and stamp his authority on that game, Etienne Tarani wins two games to one after what looks like a, a, a pretty significant effort there from those agents of treachery. Uh, but I'm pleased to see White Blue Control upsetting the apple cart a little bit. Yeah. I mean... I'm just happy to see that kind of magic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're all winners. <laughs> we're all winners <laughs> having taken part. That's right. My friends, stick with us because we're going to take a quick break. After this, we'll be catching up with Antonin De Rosa, who has a deck tech for us, going to take us through what he decided to bring this weekend. And you're not going to want to miss it. So stay with us, my friends. We'll be live back here from Richmond in just a few minutes.